sea land lovers, it'd be the top 10 scandalous pirates in history. Arr. Number 10, Blackbeard, the pirate's pirate. A rough looking, no good, rotten privateer who sailed the seas looking for booty to plunder and <laughs> I'm not talking about chest of gold. The captain of the Queen Anne's Revenge, a mighty vessel with enough cannons to make any sailor sweat as well as fierce and intimidating appearances. Captain Blackbeard was said to even tangle fuses in his facial hair and ignite them, making his face appear as if it were in a cloud of fiery smoke. That is that is crazy. That's that's like beyond like Post Malone, man. It's a crazy look. While it may seem like theatrics, it was more of a scare tactic, and he was one pirate that was for sure to be feared. Scary dude. Don't don't cross Blackbeard. The Queen Anne's Adventure. Number nine, Francis Drake. Sick Parvis Magna, greatness from small beginnings. That may sound familiar to PlayStation fans of the Uncharted series. Francis Drake was an English explorer, captain, and Navy expert. He's most well known for travels and circumnavigation. That's all fine and dandy. However, Francis Drake's expeditions weren't exactly without scandal as they were also pirating expeditions as the Queen had basically instructed him to plunder Spanish ships and ports on his way. Which they did. Well, why not? The Queen says you gotta do it, you gotta do it. His biggest prize came in March 1579 when he seized the Spanish treasure ship, the Nuestra Santora de la Concepcion, and liberated it of a dozen chests of coins, 80 pounds of gold, and 26 tons of silver. Wow, that's a lot of loot. He even shared a lot of his booty with his fellow mates and financial backers. Very Robin Hood of you, sir. I commend, yeah, that's nice. Number eight, Black Bart. Bartholomew Roberts may have been the most successful pirate, at least according to vessels captured, with somewhere ranging a total of 400 ships in his lifetime. Estimated, of course. A vicious and brutal man, he was a natural born pirate. He spent most of his life on pirate ships before becoming captain himself. He adopted the pirate code and may have been the first pirate to fly colors. Hmm, interesting. One thing for sure, there would never be a Welshman so nasty as Black Bart ever again. He was operating all over the globe, America, Canada, South America, Africa. He eventually would meet his end in battle, but was gallantly remembered for his piracy by other pirates. Number seven, Grace O'Malley. The golden age of piracy was a long time ago, so yeah, there's not gonna be that many female pirates. That's how it goes. However, the female pirates that were around were pretty nasty, and it seems whatever a fair lass gets behind the helm of a ship, they seem to do very well, like Grace O'Malley. Even at a young age, she was showing signs of rebellious leadership. She was stubborn and in her ways. She cut her hair in defiance as a youth. The girl was stubborn, she wouldn't listen. That grit is what made her a very successful pirate, and to this day, remembered to the Irish as a hero. She's got a couple statues around. I don't have a statue, I wish I did. Number six, Captain Morgan. Pirate, businessman, and rum. My knowledge of Captain Morgan goes about as far as high school parties in your mom's basement or enjoying a refreshing cocktail with too much sun at the Cotty and the Muskogas, bro. <laughs> in actuality, he was a ruthless pirate who made his fortune plundering Spanish ships. Spanish had a lot of trade going to and from the New World, so it kind of just makes sense. Well, after he made his do re mi, he did the next sensible thing and invested in some land. And by that, I mean he owned plantations, so yeah, he wasn't such a nice dude. Diversifying is great, anyone will tell you that, but, but not like that, that's not a good business. We don't, we don't like that here. Like a lot of the pirates on this list, his early life is pretty much unknown, so all that's down on record is that he was a devious criminal who oftentimes was trying to dodge the crown. Number five, Rachel Wall. A very interesting case here, as this may be the only American woman to try her luck at piracy for the time. A runaway at a young age, she eventually found herself sailing the seas with a group of unsavory characters. What makes Rachel join this less than reputable folks on the sea here? Well, it's actually her siren song tactics. Extremely clever and lethal. Rachel Wall's crew and ship were opportunists. Whenever a storm had come through the area, they would brave the storm and then dress the ship as if it had received major damage or just really look out of luck from the storm. Then take the ship and place it where they knew other vessels full of loot would be passing by. 
The crew hid and then they placed the fair lass on the main deck. She lured in ships to their doom, for after they got close, the charade was uncovered and the opposing ship was boarded. It's actually very smart. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't think of that sucks because you see a woman out at the sea, you gotta go help her, and then there she is, and then, arr, give me your money. I don't know, that's, that's, that's what pirates do, right? They say that, right? Number four, Calico Jack. Calico for the clothes he wore, and Jack was short for John because. Okay, was he wearing kitties or something, Calico? I don't know. Anyway, Jack was just like all the other pirates out there and on this list. Rootin' tootin', lootin', shootin', cowboy of the seas. Most likely a lack of baths, too. That just, that, that grosses me out. However, one story tells it all. One day, while preparing his crew and ship in Cuba, he was ambushed by authorities. He managed to escape to Nassau, which... Uh, in case you didn't know, it was kind of like Pirate HQ. Well, they all congregated. Eventually, he was brought before the law. His claim was that he only became a pirate because of Vane. Apparently, this was enough to let him off where he lived as a law-abiding citizen for about an hour. And then he was back to pirating. <laughs> I promise I'll be good, sir. Where's the booty? Number three, Pirate Queen. When people talk about pirates, they think about the crystal clear waters of the Caribbean and the pirates that loomed about that part of the world during the golden age of piracy. However, piracy doesn't mean nice beaches and palm trees. There's still pirates around today, especially around the African coast. There's a lot, a lot of pirates there. I don't think a lot of people realize that. However, China in the past was no different from that. A famous pirate from the time was Zhang Yi Sao. A Chinese woman who inherited a pirate empire from her late husband. She worked with it too. She expanded her husband's empire and became the Empress of the Seas. At one point, she commanded 24 ships personally and oversaw a force of 1,400 pirates. She unified other pirates to join her empire with a fleet estimated to be around 400 junks, which is a fancy name for ships, and around 40,000 pirates, all loyal to the Pirate Queen. She engaged in combat with the East India Company, Portugal, and the Qing Dynasty. She was a bad woman. Bye, woman. Number two, Mary Reed. Another female pirate, except this one's a little different. Mary Reed hid she was a woman for many years, which begs to differ. How did no dude or man, sailor, find that out that she was, that's so, okay. She went by the name Mark Reed, which is just as effective as Ben Kenobi compared to Obi-Wan Kenobi, so okay. Being a pirate aboard Calico Jack's ship was as fun as you think it was. Eventually, the law caught up with all of them. Calico Jack finally got his comeuppance, and her identity was revealed. She turned out to be pregnant, so she got off the hook. Sadly, though, she passed away from a fever a few months later because this is the past, and a fever can do that to you. Number one, William the Kid. We've mentioned everything from cannons and ships to swashbuckling adventures. But what haven't we mentioned? Well, it would be the adventures of William the Kid. Okay, yes, pirate, privateer, bad dude, yes, yes. However, he may be responsible for the most stereotypical pirate traits. For example, the buried treasure, X marks the spot. That's kind of cool, actually. That's going to wrap it up for me today, guys. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe here at Bumblebee. And if you, too, want to go on a swashbuckling adventure, sir, then check out my social somewhere down below. I've been your host, Big Chetty, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Speaking of X marks the spot. Oh, there it is. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Pirate. Being a pirate would be kind of cool, I guess. The not showering thing would be kind of sucky, though. Speaking of crown. <laughs> oh, that. There you go. <laughs> There's a three parter. <laughs> Another female pirate, except this one's actually a little bit different. A little bit different, huh? Another female, but Rick, I don't know, Rick. Morty, shut up, Morty. <laughs>